Hello everyone and welcome to another beginner's guide to the Division 2 in 2024. I am covering all sorts of different beginner guides for new and returning players. So do check out the playlist that is linked down in the video description if you want to check out anything that I've gone over. They should all be very helpful. Today you'll see that I'm here stood outside the specialization station because this video is all about specializations. I'm going to be giving you a full guide today. If you would rather have these guides in written format, I am doing that also over on my gcrock.com website. Again, it'll be linked down in the video description once those guides are live. So let's get right into this. This could be a long one today, so everything will be timestamped in case you want to skip anything. First, I just want to go over specializations, and they unlock as soon as you reach level 30 through your DC playthrough. You can skip DC and go straight to New York, and if you do so, you will unlock specializations as you do that. And there's three that you unlock from the start, and they can be seen here. We've got the Sharpshooter specialization, which is Attack 50C Rifle. We have the Survivalist, which is a crossbow, and the Demolition which is the M32A1 multi-shot grenade launcher. So once you have these unlocked, you're going to be able to select one of these three specializations to have as your signature weapon. It's an addition to your primary, secondary, and sidearm, and it is a signature, which means it doesn't have the same ammo used that you use for them. There is special ammo that needs to drop on the ground for you to pick up in order to use these, and some can be very powerful what's more important though is that, that when you do have these unlocked is that you level them up and you'll notice that each specialization has some points here i've currently maxed out my points on all three of these and what these do if you go in and inspect once let's inspect the demolitionist here each one has a skill tree and you're able to invest these points into this tree they all work very similar in the bottom left corner here is going to be extra weapon damage for whatever different weapons you want to invest into up to a maximum of three that you're able to choose that you've then got a, a special sidearm that you can unlock there's then some perks that normally involve your squad in the bottom right corner there's normally a uniform to unlock some skill perks there's then demo sorry there's then signature weapon or specialization perks there and there's like med kit and other perks at the top they all work similar to that and you'll eventually invest into everything leaving only a few weapons that you can't invest into now what's important about these skill trees is that a lot of these will kind of relate to what build you're trying to build so you'll want to have a look at these perks before you decide what specialization to use if you are creating a build because some will work better than others and to unlock these points in order to invest in the skill points, all you've got to do is wear the specialization. As you are leveling up as you get to end game, I think you're going to get three of these points for every shade watch level that you get at level 40. If you're in level 30 end game, there's going to be every field proficiency cash that you earn. Basically, every single time you level up in your end game, you will unlock points. Not only that, but the invaded mission rotation, they reward you very helpfully for... Uh, uh, specialization points as well i think you get five specialization points for every invaded mission that you complete so you can use them every week to your advantage to get these leveled up quicker and then on top of the original three specializations you also have technician gunner and firewall now unfortunately they're not just gonna hand these to you they're going to come with projects that you need to complete in order to unlock them and i am going to go over all of these in this video to give you tips if that is what you want but first there is a way to unlock the specialization itself without going through all of these objectives if i just bring up what these objectives look like though if you have a look at the firewall here there are five stages and as you go through the stages there's going to be multiple objectives per one in order to complete all five to unlock the specialization but as you go through there's other things that you can unlock you can see that there's a reward cache there there's a ammo dump blueprint you can unlock there there's another Another reward cache there's another blueprint and at the end there you've got the firewall specialization every one of these three additional specializations have this setup where you're going to unlock two blueprints for going through these projects so they are worth doing however if you come to your menu and head to the store you can go over to add-ons and in add-ons you're able to purchase the division two year one bundle and if you get that it's gonna instantly unlock all of the year one specializations which is these three this um firewall the gunner 
and the technician. So you'll get the specializations right away without having to complete the projects. Not only that, you're going to get access to the eight exclusive classified assignments as well and one exclusive agent ward outfit and one exclusive scout emote. Now, I forget how much this costs, but if you have the Phoenix credits for it, I highly recommend getting it anyway just for the classified assignments. And it is nice to have the specializations unlocked right away so you can get them leveled up quicker and you can start using them on builds. And finally, before we get into unlocking all of these projects and giving you some tips, a question I still get asked a lot about is what happened to the specialization revamp? A long time ago, a couple of years back, there was a whole article that went out that discussed the specialization revamp and how it was all going to change. They cancelled that idea. We currently have no idea what's happening in the future apart from there's going to be a new sort of end game to the Division 2. A DLC is coming. And sure, there may be some changes to the specializations is what they've said. But that whole specialization revamp that was discussed years ago is cancelled. So we can forget about that. What that means is these specializations are going to work like this for the foreseeable future so now what i'm going to do is go through each specialization that you need to work on those projects for remember the first three here are given you don't need to worry about them so we're going to start with technician go through to gunner and end on firewall and help you with all of these field research projects so for stage one of the technician you can see the three different objectives you've got to do there. You've got to donate 50 resources to any control point, kill 20 enemies with a shotgun, and complete three living world activities. Shotgun kills and living world activities are very easy. Just throw on a shotgun to get the kills. It's as easy as that. And then the living world activities are just activities that are happening in the open world. So we can see convoys, propaganda broadcasts. You can see territory controls. And I even think control points count as the living world activities. So complete three of those and you're good. And as for donating resources at a control point, you'll first just need to take over any control point on the map so it turns green and you'll have a control point officer there. Just head over to the control point officer and interact with them and you're able to donate resources. As long as you can donate 50 or more resources to an officer, you'll get this objective complete. Moving on to stage two, and the first objective here is to kill the blade in DCD headquarters after disabling her lawnmower on normal or higher difficulty. The blade is the final boss of the DCD headquarters main mission. So just make your way all the way to the end and she'll put down this lawnmower. Just make sure you destroy that before you kill the blade and that'll be that objective complete. You'll then need to kill two hostiles with the same grenade three times this can be easily done at the start of viewpoint museum which is another main mission in the game just set the difficulty to story make sure that you got concussion grenades on and then push forward to when some enemies spawn in you'll be able to take cover just here and they won't spot you so get the grenade out aim your grenade and just chuck it none of them will run out of the way and the grenade will kill all three of them which will be one out of three for this objective you just need to do this two more times so just head back to where you set the mission up just switch the difficulty over a couple of times go to normal and then back to story they'll reset the instance and you can just go again your next objective is to kill three controllers of any faction. And to be honest with you, you probably got this while you're going through DCD headquarters. So it should be ticked off, but just in case it isn't, a controller looks like this with this icon above their health bar. I like to call it a Wi-Fi icon and they'll have control of some sort of device that's going to attack you. So like the blade at the end of DCD, they had the lawnmower. You'll have controllers that have cars that come and explode on you and things like that. So as long as you kill three enemies with this icon, that is all that is required. And as I said, you should have got this through your first run of DCD. And your final objective for step two is to complete the Roosevelt Island mission on non-invaded normal or higher difficulty, which is very straightforward. On completion of this step, you will get the Motherly Love Crafting Blueprint, which you can craft at the crafting station. It's an Alp Summit piece, and it comes with 10% skill elf as a perfect attribute. Moving on to stage three now, and your first objective here is to kill Bucks in the District Union Arena after destroying his turret on normal or higher difficulty. Again, this is non-invaded, so you won't find Bucks on invaded, and you're looking to reach them all. 
which is here. As you approach this area, Bucks is going to be a named enemy and they will put out a turret. So wait for this to happen. As soon as they've done that, just make sure you shoot that turret out and then you are free to kill Bucks. As long as you do that, you'll have the objective complete. For the heads up objective, you must finish off three elite enemies with a headshot. I don't need to tell you how to do this. If you see an elite enemy, try and kill them with a headshot. Once you've done this three times, you'll have that objective complete. So move on to the next one now, which is death from above. Kill enemies from above. You need to do 20 of it. Again, very straightforward, but there is a very good position to get this done quickly. Just head to the start of Air and Space Museum and set the difficulty to what you want. I advise normal just because it's easier. And as you run in, just on the left side here, you're able to climb up these ledges here. Now, this puts you at a vantage point and enemies are beneath you. So all you need to do is kill all the enemies on the ground and each enemy here is going to count towards this objective. Obviously, there's not 20 enemies here. So once you've cleared them all, just run back out to the start, switch difficulty around and go back. That will reset the instance and you can just go again. Rinse and repeat this until you kill 20 enemies from above. And for the final objective of stage 3, you must complete the capital building mission on non-invaded, normal or higher difficulty. Again, this is very straightforward, so just go and complete that stronghold. And your reward for completing stage 3 is some power cash keys, and you'll get the ballistic skin for a weapon if you own the premium edition, which is the year one pass. We are now up to stage 4. I'm starting with the Bagman objective. It says you must kill the Raven in Manning National Zoo, which is available in World Tier 5, by first destroying his ammo pack on normal or higher difficulty. Manning National Zoo is a super long mission with multiple named enemies and the raven is right near the end. It's the last named enemy before the final boss. You'll go through these gates here and enter this area which is very open and there's a lot of grass and a lot of trees. So once you're at this area, be careful because the raven is going to spawn towards the end. Once the raven does spawn, just make sure you don't kill him because you need to take out his ammo pack. If you put the difficulty on normal like I did so I could just speed through it, it can be quite easy to kill him. So just be very careful here. You want to try and get behind him because that's where the ammo pack is. It's kind of on his bum. So a decoy or something that's just going to distract the raven here is going to be very beneficial to try and get his aggro away from you. And you can see here where his ammo pack is. I just shot his legs by accident. That's why you've got to be quite careful if you play it on normal but once in a very good position you'll be able to shoot that ammo pack out and it'll explode like this once it's done that you are safe to kill the raven and complete the objective you'll then need to do the delivery cancelled objective which requires you to kill five hostile drones or cars you can do this on multiple missions. I'm doing this on District Union Arena on normal. And right at the start, you're going to have a controller enemy. So that's that enemy again I spoke about earlier with the Wi-Fi above their head. Make sure you don't kill this enemy and kill everything else. And just wait for this enemy to start sending cars at you. You can see one coming at me now. As soon as it sends it over, I'm going to destroy that car. Just letting it come away from the enemy so it doesn't kill them in the process. And that's one out of five. With the area clear of other enemies, I can now just wait for this one controller to keep on sending cars out. I've just hit another one there to get two out of five. It takes a little while, but just stay in cover. They will eventually send another one and keep on letting them send cars until you've destroyed all five to complete the objective. System Overload is the next objective that requires you to kill three Black Tusk mini tanks after using an EMP pulse on them. For this, you just want to make sure that you do have the Jammer Pulse equipped. So head to your skills and go to your pulses and equip the Jammer Pulse. The easiest way to do this is to start District Union Arena on Legendary. You are going to want a fairly decent build to do it like this, but there are these mini tanks right at the start and there's plenty of them. A shield also helps you so you can kind of like shield peek around cover and you can see one of these mini tanks right in front. In fact, two of them. There's a red one there and there's a purple one. Just get the health bars quite low and then jam them. 
Here's one on screen. Now that's at very low health, so I've just jammed it and then I've destroyed it. You do need to destroy it while the jam effect is still on it, so the icon's kind of like above it. If that icon goes off, it's not going to count. That's why you want to get them low. And like I said, this is just the easiest way to do it if you want to get this off very, very quickly and you have the build for it. If you don't, just play any invaded missions that are on your map. You will come across these mini tanks. Just run the uh, jammer EM P pulse, jam them, kill them, and just do three of them to get the objective complete. Your next objective after those mini tanks is lightning round that requires you to shoot six targets in the shooting range in less than 10 seconds. Just head to the shooting range and make sure the challenge is on easy. And you may want to use an LMG for this to make it even easier. But if you throw a grenade out first just to cause some damage and to spray all of these targets, you'll definitely kill six of them within the time limit to get the objective complete. And then your final objective for stage four is State of Union that requires you to complete the District Union Arena mission on non-invaded, normal or higher difficulty. Again, very straightforward. Complete that stronghold. You'll then complete stage four and you'll unlock the send-off blueprint. The send-off looks like this and it comes with a perfect distance talent, which is 100% optimal range. Stage 5 is the final stage and for this you'll get the technician specialization if you don't own the year 1 pass. And if you do own the year 1 pass you'll also get the premium reward of the shuttle skin for the specialization. And the first objective requires you to kill Captain Kendra Nelson in the Capitol building by shooting the weak point on her RPG backpack first on normal or higher difficulty. This named enemy can be found towards the end of Capital Building. It does need to be non-invaded. And as soon as you run out onto this rooftop, you want to head to the right because the enemy is going to climb up on the right side here. We can see the yellow tarpaulin. As they start to climb up, just shoot that backpack. As soon as that explodes, kill the enemy to get the objective complete. Next up, you want to kill Private Jeremiah Ramos by first destroying his backpack weak points in the Lincoln Memorial on normal difficulty or higher. Jeremiah is one of the final bosses of the mission. You'll enter this final area, there'll be a few ads to clear, and then a first named enemy will spawn in. You don't need to worry about this one, just kill this enemy however you like to. Once they're dead, a second named enemy is going to spawn in, and this is going to be Jeremiah. So we've got to be careful at this point because we need to destroy the, back, uh, the backpack weak spot first. Just like that, they'll get shocked as you do it. Once you do that, you can kill Jeremiah, and the objective will be complete. Running with the big dogs is your next objective, and for this, you've got to destroy three Black Tusk Warhounds. It's best to tie this one in with the final objective, those shade invaders, because that requires you to complete any invaded stronghold mission on hard or higher difficulty. While you are going through the invaded missions to unlock that stronghold, and then completing that invaded stronghold, you'll certainly destroy three Black Tusk Warhounds while doing that. And then on completion of the invaded stronghold, just make sure it's set to hard when you start it. You'll get the Shade Invaders objective complete as well. Which means you've got one objective left to do to complete this specialization quest, and that's to perform a salute emote while any of your hives are deployed. So head into your power menu and your list of emotes. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, it is a common one. You'll see the salute emote here. So just select that and put that in place. You will also want to equip any hive. So just put a hive on, throw it on the ground, and then open your emote menu and just do the salute. Once you've done that, the objective will be complete and we're now finished with the technician specialization. So now we are going to move on to the gunner specialization and it works exactly the same. We've got five stages of objectives that we need to complete in order to get all of the rewards and to unlock the gunner specialization if you haven't purchased the year one pass. So starting at stage one, we've got two objectives to start off with. And the first one requires you to kill Roach in bank headquarters and it can only be completed on normal or harder difficulties. Roach is the final boss of the mission. Just make your way through the mission until you reach this final area. Once you've taken out enough enemies, Roach is going to appear up top. 
Be careful because there might also be a sniper. But once you've taken care of Roach, that'll be objective complete. All that's left to do now for stage one is to use mounted guns to kill enemies. I think it's about 20 in total, but this was already completed as I unlocked this for whatever reason. So I'm not sure. But whatever amount it is, you can do a control points. Some control points will have a mounted gun on them, including the demolition site here in downtown east. So head to this control point and make sure that it's red so you need to take over it. And then just head inside the demolition site and climb up to the left and push forward. As you enter this decaying building, there's gonna be a mounted gun in the center here. Enemies might use it against you, but once you've cleared the first wave of this control point, you can then use that mounted gun to defend it. So on the defense phase, just interact with the mounted gun and all the enemies are gonna come from in front of you. So just kill them with this and hopefully there's enough enemies to get the objective complete. If there wasn't enough enemies, just bring up your map and go into global settings. Here you're able to reset control points. So just do this and confirm. That'll reset the control point for you and you'll be able to do it again until you get the objective complete. Obviously there's mounted guns elsewhere in the game. This is not the only way of doing this, but it's a quick way to get it done. For stage two of the gunner specialization, you're going to get a blueprint reward. This time it's in the form of a Vedmedistia vest. And to get this, you need to complete two objectives. The first one is to defeat Lieutenant Kelly in Air and Space Museum. And it can only be completed on normal or harder difficulty. Again, just like earlier with Bank Headquarters, Lieutenant Kelly is going to be the final boss of the mission. So just make your way to the final area. And the objective will be complete once you kill Lieutenant Kelly. To complete stage 2, your next objective is to defeat bleeding enemies. This can easily be done by having a Ridgeway Pride exotic chest piece and creating a build around that. But even easier is just to throw on a Stinger Hive. So head to your skill menu, go on Hives, and equip your Stinger Hive. And we are going to be using Viewpoint Museum again, but you can do this anywhere. It's just the enemies at the start that makes things like this easy. So set the difficulty to whatever you want and run to the start of the mission with the enemy spawning. And then all you got to do while they don't notice you is throw the Stinger Hive out, wait for the Stinger Charges to go onto the enemies, and then kill them while they are bleeding. You might need a few goes at this, so just head back to the start of the mission to change the difficulty over to reset the spawn, and just do it again until the objective is complete. And as mentioned earlier, as you complete stage 2, you will get this crafting blueprint for the Vedmedistia vest. This is a Petrov vest that comes with perfect braced, so while you're in cover, weapon handling is increased by 50%. Up to stage 3 now, and your first objective is to break Sergeant Wade's helmet before defeating him in Viewpoint Museum. Can only be completed on normal or harder difficulties. Sergeant Wade is the final boss of this main mission, so once you reach him, just keep on shooting his head until his helmet breaks. Once that is broken, you can go ahead and kill him to complete the objective. Your fired is the next objective of stage 3 and this requires you to defeat enemies while they are burning. For this just head to your skills and you want to equip a flame turret or a fire starter chem launcher. My personal preference is the chem launcher. And at this point you could probably have guessed it we're heading back to viewpoint museum. We're setting the difficulty to normal and we're heading to the start where the enemies spawn in. Once they've spawned, just use the chem launcher to set them alight and then switch your weapon to kill them. They need to die while they're on fire. You can run back to the start of the mission and switch the difficulties around to reset the mission and go again if you need to. The third and final objective for stage 3 is to complete resource convoy activities. You need to do three of these in total. Just have a look on your world map and you're looking for these icons here. They'll be going from one control point to another and that's what a resource convoy is. When you approach these convoys, you'll notice some enemies that are carrying resources. Just kill them and you will get additional spawns. Once you clear all the waves of enemies, you walk back over the resources to complete the convoy. You will get a message on screen pop up to confirm you've completed the convoy and once you've got that you just need to do two more. 
No support is the first objective of stage 4 for this specialization, and you must defeat General Ridgeway in the capital stronghold without using an armor kit, and this can only be completed on normal or harder difficulty. This must be non-invaded and it's the final boss of the stronghold. You can take a medkit all the way up to this point here where you extract the briefcase. Once you've put this briefcase on that rope and the chopper takes it away, it's from here that you cannot use an armor kit. Ridgeway is going to spawn up above and you must take care of him without using that armor kit to get the objective complete. This is very easy to do on normal difficulty. Next can be quite a tricky one if you don't know what you're doing, but I'm hoping to give you some good advice now. For roaming gunners, you have to defeat heavy weaponed enemies in the open world, so this can't be in missions. It can be at control points though, and there's different factions that can spawn these heavy weapon enemies. The True Sons are one of these factions, and you've got a stretch of control points here where you're gonna find them. I'd start at this control point all the way east near Capitol Hill, work your way from there and go from control point to control point, killing any enemies in the middle and you will find plenty of these hopefully spawning at the control points as well i was just about to go to the final control point on this stretch when i found my final enemy and the enemies look like this i've just pulsed this group here and what you're looking for is that sort of like free bullet icon above that red bar there they are your heavy gunner enemies they like to lie down and fire their weapon at you it doesn't matter what color the enemy is it could be red purple yellow you just need to kill five of those and the final two objectives can be worked on together in fact the we've got a pulse objective you could have started earlier you've got to defeat enemies highlighted with a pulse 20 of them and then the this land is my land objective requires you to complete territory control activities so to finish this stage off just make sure you go to your skills and put on a scanner pulse and the territory controls look like this. These are an open world activity with like two guns and a cross. Just find these on the map and go and complete five of them while scanning all the enemies with your pulse to kill them and you'll have enough enemies to get both objectives done. Your reward for completing this stage is the Sleepnet Craftable Blueprint. And this comes with a talent called Perfect Frenzy. For every 8 bullets in the magazine capacity, you gain 3% rate of fire and 3% weapon damage for 5 seconds when reloading from empty. And now we're on to the final stage of the gunner specialization, starting with the turn to stone objective. For this, you must destroy all of the basilisk's armor before defeating him on Roosevelt Island. This can be completed on normal or harder difficulties. To start up Roosevelt Island on normal and head to the part where you have to pick up this explosive. This is about midway through the mission and you'll use the explosive on this gate to open it. But before you go in there, switch your build to a tankier build if you have it. I know a lot of people struggle with this, but if you've got an all blue core build, you're not going to be hitting hard and you want to use your sidearm against this enemy because you need to strip all of the armor. So once you've got a build and it's all blue and you know you're not doing too much damage, you might want to up the difficulty in a way so you don't do too much damage if that makes sense. But then that, that obviously makes it a little bit easier for you to, to die too. So normal is the best difficulty. And as I said, with six blue cores, you shouldn't kill him that easily. Clear out all the enemies in this area until the named enemy spawns. And when he does spawn, there'll be a few more enemies that will spawn in. So just take your time, get rid of them, and let him run around. Now, if you've got this six blue core build, he really can't do that much damage. And your goal now is to strip him of all his armor. It is going to take a little bit of time, and you do have to be very careful. I just start with the helmet to get the helmet to go. And then once his helmet is gone, you've got to work on his chest his two arms and his two legs the more armor you take off the more trickier this is gonna get because if you misfire your shots and you hit his health bar his health bar will start coming down you'll see in a minute that his health bar starts going down for me because i am missing some shots so what i advise you to do is kind of work on the chest arms and legs together just so they've all taken a bit of damage for when they start disappearing just so you don't have too much damage left to do if that makes sense so his chest has just gone now and all i've got left now is his two arms and his two legs 
Eventually, you'll just have the one last piece remaining, and this is when it is most risky. I've just cracked that, but look at where his health is. I missed a lot of shots, so you do need to be careful, because if you kill him before all of that armor is broken, you'll have to restart the mission and try again. But once both arms, both, both legs, his chest, and his helmet are all gone, you are free to kill him, and the objective will be complete. From here, don't leave the mission because the next objective is called Roosevelt Roundup. And for this, you must use mounted weapons to kill enemies in the Roosevelt Island stronghold. So while we're here, we're going to get this done. This can only be completed on normal or harder difficulties, so you should be okay with the difficulty. Right at the end of the mission for the boss fight, you're going to have to take out two explodable canisters, one to the right and one to the left. And on both sides, there's going to be a mounted Gun. So just like earlier for another objective, you're just going to be killing enemies with these mounted guns and there's 20 in total. They don't spin all the way round though, so you do need to get the angles right, but there are a lot of enemies in this area for you to take advantage of. Just let them keep on spawning in. What I advise you to do is kill any enemies that are kind of like out of your eye line that are at the back of the area and don't destroy the canisters until no more enemies are spawning in. You can use the right gun or the left gun and the left gun is quite good because all the enemies spawn right in front of you. You can see me jump on this gun now. I'm just going to make a spawn spawn in and here they go. They'll just run out right in front of you for some easy kills. So like I said, just kill as many enemies as you can before you destroy the two explodables. Once no more enemies are spawning, you will have to take out both of the explodables to continue the mission. Enemies will then come off the center of the boat though. So this is another opportunity for you to get some more kills on this mounted gun. So just take care of those enemies. And I actually got my objective complete on the final one, the tank there. If you still haven't done it by this point though, there is one final mounted gun on the boat and enemies are going to start spawning behind you. Before doing the mission objective to destroy the boat, just head to this mounted gun and take care of more enemies if you still need them. You should definitely get this done in one sitting, but if not, you may need to replay the mission. Up next is a very easy end to stage 5 and the gunner specialization quest. All you've got to do is complete 7 open world activities and defeat enemies with an LMG in the open world. So they link in together, just throw on an LMG and go and complete open world activities. We have spoken about open world activities plenty already, so you know what these are, but just so you know, control points also count as an open world activity, so you can include these as well. With the technician and gunner specializations now finished, we've only got the firewall to go. So starting at stage one, we're going to do exactly the same again. We've got five stages. We'll go through these and give you any tips that you need. The first objective of stage one is to set enemies on fire. You need to set 10 of them on fire. So just like earlier for another objective, I'm just going to advise you to put on the fire turret or fire starter chem launcher. And just like previous objectives, we're heading to Viewpoint Museum. We're going to put it on normal, go to the start of the mission where the enemies spawn in and set them on fire. There's not enough there to get 10. You can go and do some more in the mission if you want to, or just run back and restart the mission to do some more. The next objective on your agenda is to kill enemy Scorchers. You've got to kill 10 of them. And the best place to do this is Potomac Event Center. You can set the difficulty to normal and the very first area that you go into will more than likely always spawn a Scorcher. A Scorcher looks like this. It's got a little flame icon above them and they'll have a flamethrower. These are what you need to kill. Once you kill one of them, you've got nine more to do. And in this area, anywhere between one and three can spawn. So just do this area until you move on to the next objective. If uh, you need more, just restart the mission and do the area again. There's only once or twice none of them spawned. You'll get this done quite quickly. With the 10 Scorchers done, your final objective for stage 1 is up close and personal. And all you've got to do here is kill 20 enemies closer than 7 meters. Just face tank them, get right in the face on any mission, anywhere, on the easiest difficulty. Kill 20 of them and you'll be done. This will then take it on to stage 2. 
2 where you get another blueprint reward, the ammo dump holster, which is a very good holster. We'll have a look at it in a few moments. Your first objective for stage 2 is to defeat the wildfire in Roosevelt Island after destroying her fuel tank on normal or higher difficulty. The wildfire named boss does appear quite early into the mission. You'll go up a rope onto a wing. You'll get this restock box here as you're heading into this area. And you just need to start clearing the enemies in this area. The wildfire will eventually spawn in. And I suggest you clear all the other enemies around you. Because what you need to try and do is take out a tank before you kill her. So once there's no more enemies left, there's just you two. You can use a decoy or something like that if you need to. It's quite easy to shoot from the front. It'll go on fire. She'll rush you and it'll explode. Once that's done, just kill her and the objective is complete. Your next objective is name and shame, where you got to neutralize named enemies while they are inflicted by a status effect. You need to do three of those, and the final objective of this stage is to complete the Manning National Zoo mission against the outcast on normal or higher difficulty. That zoo mission has about five named enemies in total, so we're going to save name and shame until we go and do that. So for now, we're going to move on to the inhumane objective where you got to apply two status effects to a single enemy before defeating them there are many different skills you can use to apply status effects but i'm going to use for this a fire star a chem launcher and as my secondary skill i'm going to use a stinger hive and then I'm going to fast travel to Viewpoint Museum and start this mission. We're going to get to these enemies again as we've done for other objectives. I'm going to throw my Stinger Hive out and I'm going to use my Chem to also set them on fire. You might want to set the difficulty a little bit higher here just so they don't die quickly. You need to get both statuses on them before they do die. And once you kill three enemies with two status effects on them, you'll get the objective complete. You should only need one go at this, but if you need to restart the mission to try again, just do so. This then takes us on to what we've already discussed, the killing of named enemies with a status effect applied to them and Manning National Zoo. Quite early into this mission, you're going to come down into this area here where you've got to clear some enemies. And this is where your first named enemy will spawn. So you need, just need to put a status effect on them and they must die when the status is on them. If they don't, it won't count. So you'll see I quickly cancelled my shoot in there because I noticed the status weren't going to be on long enough. Use whatever you like as well. You can use the fire starter, you can use the stinger hive, a blinder, whatever you prefer. As long as they die with a status effect applied to them, it will count and you just need to do it three times. As I mentioned earlier, I think there's five named enemies on this mission. So if you do mess up, don't worry, you'll have more opportunity. Your next named enemy that you're going to encounter is when you're in the crocodile pit. There is a secret named enemy you can spawn after the crocodile pit in this area here where you've got to shoot these beehives. I'm not going to show you that secret, but that is an additional one if you want it. You will get another named enemy before you enter the train on the enemies that spawn out of it. There's Raven in this area here who we had an objective with earlier. And then there's the final boss, Emmeline Shaw. Once you've killed three named enemies with a status effect applied for them and completed this mission, you'll be finished with this stage. And your reward for completing that stage is the Ammo Dump Craftable Blueprint. I just crafted one of these and got a perfect one here to show you. It's got crit chance and crit damage on it. And you'll notice it has a third attribute, which is 10% ammo capacity. So that's what the Ammo Dump gives you. And now we're on stage three of the firewall specialization and your first objective here is bloodied bloodhound. Eliminate the bloodhound in the federal emergency bunker after applying the bleed effect to him on normal or higher difficulty. The bloodhound is the final boss of the mission and he'll smash through this door. Once he does that, just throw a stinger hive on him and as he is bleeding, you want to kill him. And that'll be the objective complete. Cruel and Unusual is the next objective. You'll see I'm already a 4 out of 5, but when I started that Federal Emergency Bunker mission to kill the Bloodhound, I was on 0 out of 5. So I got this naturally while playing. You must kill elite enemies while they are inflicted with a status effect. So if you haven't done this objective while going for the Bloodied Bloodhound, just start Federal Emergency again. 
and you're just looking for the enemies that run at you with a bomb strap to them, they do need to be elite and there's plenty on this mission. Shoot the bomb on their chest to make them explode and this counts as killing them with a status effect. Sick burn is up next and for this you've got to kill 5 enemies while you are burning. We're going to stay on federal emergency bunker here. And there's a perfect room to get this done. Towards the end of the mission, you'll come into this room here where you've got to put out the fires. Rather than put out the fires, just go and stand in them. If you're on normal difficulty, you shouldn't die that easily. And just kill the enemies while you're getting burned by this fire. There might not be enough enemies on normal to get it all done. So if there's not, just find a way to kill yourself or let the last enemy kill you. And you'll have a checkpoint just before heading into this room so you can go and burn yourself and you can do it again to complete the objective. Next up, the objective requires you to kill named enemies using your sidearm. And I'd say the easiest way to do this is Manning National Zoo because you have a named enemy very early in the mission where you uh, interact with a switch and come into this area here. And when you take out a couple of the enemies and there's just one or two remaining, the named enemy spawns in. And there's still other enemies about. So what you want to do here is just get to this area. Don't kill every enemy and just wait for the named one to spawn in. So that's going to happen now with just a couple of enemies left. I'm now going to use my sidearm to kill this enemy. And once I've killed this named enemy with my sidearm, I can just die and I'll respawn just before this point and be able to do it again. I'm only going to be able to die and respawn as long as there are other enemies remaining. So just keep that in mind and you just want to keep on repeating this process until you've killed this named enemy five times with your sidearm. And with that done, your final objective is called Orbital Burn to complete stage 3. This is very straightforward and all you have to do is complete the Space Administration HQ mission against the True Sons on normal or higher difficulty. You'll then reach stage 5 of the Firewall Specialization and another blueprint unlock after this one called the Savage Wolverine. The first step of this is called the Bigger Man Objective and you must neutralize the Corpulent in the Potomac Event Center after destroying his ammo pack on normal or higher difficulty. So just start Potomac Event Center on normal and reach the final area. This named enemy is the final named enemy that is going to spawn in as one of these heavy gunners again with an ammo pack on his back near his backside. You, you can kind of get this from the front and when you shoot it, it'll explode and all the bullets will go everywhere. That's when you know you can kill him. Once you've done that, you'll get the objective complete. Next up, you've got to do the Sword and Shield objective, which requires you to eliminate enemies with melee attacks using the Ballistic Shield. This is very straightforward, and all you need to do is equip the Ballistic Shield. So I've got the Bulwark one here that's on me. Just run into any mission that's on normal. Maybe focus enemies that don't have armor on them, and just keep on meleeing them with the shield out. You just need to kill a few of these doing this, and you'll get the objective complete. Next up, you are required to salute a burning enemy before killing them, and you must do that three times. For this, I just headed to Viewpoint Museum, and instead of using the Firestarter Chem Launcher, I went for the Incinerator Turret because it's a little bit tricky to fire the chem and do an emote. Make sure you have the Salute Emote selected, and then when you get to the enemies at the start, just throw the Incinerator Turret out to set them all alight. And once at least three of them are on fire, just do your Salute Emote, and then once you've done that, just shoot them so they die, and then once they're all dead, you'll get the objective complete. You'll then be tasked with killing named enemies using skills, and you must kill five of them. Just like earlier, I've headed back to Manning National Zoo for this to get into this area here where a named enemy spawns very early on. And you want a skill that can do some damage, so I chose the Striker Drone. So just keep on killing enemies to make the named enemy spawn, and then all you want to do is get your Striker Drone out and then focus it on the named target. Let the Striker Drone kill the target for it to count, and then make sure you don't kill all of the other enemies so that you can kill yourself and you can do the same again again five more times so you'll notice as my striker turret kills him i'll get one out of five for that and i'll destroy my striker drone and i'll just let the enemies kill me or kill myself to do it four more times 
To finish off stage four, my last objective is to complete the DARPA Research Labs mission at the Pentagon on hard or higher difficulty. So very straightforward. Just go and complete DARPA on hard and you'll be done. And with that stage complete, you'll get the Savage Wolverine Crafting Blueprint. This is a decent AR and it comes with perfectly close and personal, which Killing an enemy target within 7 meters grants 38% weapon damage for 10 seconds. This then brings us on to the final stage of the Firewall Specialization Stage 5, and it's the final stage that we're covering in this video. For the first objective there, you've got some disassembly required, where you've got to destroy the XB-31 Marauder in the Pentagon mission on normal or higher difficulty. The Marauder is part of the final area of the mission and you've got to destroy this anyway to complete it. So once you've destroyed it, the objective will be complete. You are then tasked to neutralize Wyvern in the Tidal Basin mission after blinding her twice on normal or higher difficulty. If you've not done all of the invaded missions yet, you will need to do the invaded missions for the week that we're on. You'll need to complete the invaded stronghold and then Tidal Basin invaded will unlock. And Wyvern is the final boss of this mission. So I'll complete all of the objectives of this final area. I'll make sure I wear a blinder firefly and I'll just blind Wyvern. You need to do it twice though. So once you're blinded Wyvern once, just let the cooldown cool down so you get the blinder back. And then blind her again for a second time. And once she has been blinded twice, just look out for that blind icon to make sure she has been blinded. You can kill her and the objective is complete. Next up, you must eliminate elite Scorcher enemies. And you've got to do 10 of them. And not only that, but you must eliminate named enemies while they are bleeding. So we're going to do both of these in one. There's five named enemies that we need and 10 elite scorchers. So just put on something like your stinger hive and I'll show you the best way to do this. Just head to Roosevelt Island and go through the mission until you get to this area here. You can play it on any difficulty, so I suggest putting it, putting it on normal. Just make sure it's non-invaded because if it's invaded, you won't have these enemies and you won't get this named enemy here. But this named enemy is called Wildfire when it is on the normal version of the mission. And even on normal difficulty, it will be an elite and it's a scorcher. So you've got a named elite and you've got a scorcher. So all you've got to do is get Wildfire to spawn and once the wildfire has spawned just make sure you leave some enemies alive because we're going to farm this enemy you want to throw your stinger hive down so that um it makes the wildfire bleed kill the wildfire while they are bleeding and you've just killed one elite scorcher and you've also eliminated one named enemy while they're bleeding you're working on both of them now with the enemies remaining just make sure you die get them to kill you or kill yourself and then just do exactly the same again. Make sure Wildfire goes on bleed and kill them. And you just got to do this five times to get the bleed one out of the way. And then once you got the bleed one out of the way, you can just keep on killing yourself and then go and kill the Wildfire without putting them on bleed just to finish off the Eliminate Elite Scorchers. This will then leave you with one final objective called burning down the house where you've got to complete any invaded stronghold mission on hard or higher difficulty. If you're doing this at the same time as you've just done Tidal Basin, you've already done an invaded stronghold, that's fine. Just go to whatever stronghold that was. Mine was Capital Building. And you're able to toggle the mission mode. So I think it goes back to normal after you completed it on Invaded. But toggling the mission mode can switch it back to Invaded so you can replay the mission. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm doing Capital Building again. I've toggled the mission mode to make it Invaded. And I've just got to make sure it's on hard or higher difficulty. And then once I've completed that mission, I'd have completed stage five, which is the final stage for the firewall specialization. And there you have it. That is the end of my beginner's guide to specializations in 2024 on the Division 2. I hope this video has been helpful if you're a new player or a returning player. If it has been, be sure to hit like and subscribe for more content. And as I said at the start of the video, this is a part of a whole series of beginner guides. If you need help with anything else, there's a beginner guide playlist linked down in the video description. So you can go and check out all of my other 
videos that I have done, but also as written guides as well. So go and check out the written guides if you prefer them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope it's been helpful. And until the next time, stay safe and peace out.